Boeing Starliner that is currently docked to the International Space Station, its future is set. It will bring astronauts back down to Earth. But the future of the Boeing Starliner program is uncertain. And I want to talk about what happens after this demo mission for the Starliner program. First, I want to talk about the word stuck because this word has been used a lot lately. I got two calls by reporters this morning, and at first I was like, why are they calling me? Like, there's no updates. There's, not, there's nothing really important to talk about. But it turns out that yesterday, Boeing had put out a statement where they specifically denied that the astronauts are stuck on the space station. So of course, that's the story that some people are going with, not all. So, um, so, you know, space journalists are very responsible. They know the nuances. They understand what's going on. I think that the general media, the general you know, journalists who don't follow, they, they latch on to these words and stuck being one of them. So first off, I just want to read you the uh, part of the update that was given by Boeing. The helium leaks and the majority of the thruster problems on Starliner spacecraft have been deemed stable and not a concern. Only one of the capsule's 27 thrusters is currently offline. Four of the five thrusters that shut down are, are operating normally and even though officially there is no return date other than sometime in July sources within NASA are saying that they're aiming for July 6th so not terribly far away it's not like the um, two astronauts that came on board Starliner are stuck up there indefinitely that's not what's going on last night the astronauts on board ISS, all of them, they were told to shelter in the respective capsules because of an emergency situation with space debris. And I, forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce this Russian word. Resource? Resource P1 satellite? Um, so that was a satellite that was decommissioned recently. It is about 5,600 kilograms and it broke up yesterday and caused at least 180 trackable pieces of debris according to Leo Labs. And so that's a really bad situation. And when these kinds of debris clouds happen, NASA asks the astronauts to not only shelter in place, but to shelter in their capsules so that in an emergency, they can use their respective capsules to return back to Earth. Sunny Williams and Butch Wilmore, they were sheltering within the Starliner capsule. And if they needed to, if there was a, a real emergency situation, they could have used Starliner to return back to Earth in that emergency. Nobody on NASA side, on the Boeing side, on any official side is saying that these two astronauts will not be able to use the Starliner Calypso, that's the name of this particular Starliner, to return back to Earth. So then what's going on? Why had they delayed this mission from like the week that it was supposed to be to now several weeks, you know, a month of these two astronauts being in space attached to the ISS? They are doing tests. There is one part of the Starliner capsule that does not return to Earth. You know, Starliner is reusable, but the service module is burned up upon re-entry. So they're going to kick off that service module and it'll burn up in the atmosphere. So while it is attached to the National Space Station, that is what they're testing because that's where all the problems were. The leaks, the thruster problems it call comes from the service module. They are evaluating and doing tests on and gathering data on the part that they cannot do on the ground, that you absolutely need to be in space, dock to the space station to do these tests. And these are two veteran astronauts. They are perfectly capable of doing this testing. Um, like you couldn't have chosen two better people to be testing out this mission, which is a demo mission. It is not a fully operational mission yet. And that is key. And I'm going to talk about that. A question was posed to me this morning by a reporter about the future of the Starliner program. He said that um, his sources say that people within Boeing just don't care about Starliner. Um, you know, is Starliner, is Boeing just gonna back out of the contract? We just had Collins recently back out of the contract for spacesuits. I'll link to that video above as well. It could be um, Boeing decides to do the same thing. And if this sounds familiar, just one year ago, we had discussions we being the space community, had discussions about whether or not Boeing was going to back out. It was after an earnings call where Boeing disclosed just how much money they are losing on the Boeing Starliner project. Starliner is a fixed price contract. So that means that NASA gave Boeing a set amount of money and no additional money was given for any of these delays, any of these problems. They had significant delays on the uncrewed, they did two uncrewed demos. They had significant delays with both of those missions. And then they had delays with even this crewed mission, the launch, the docking, <laughs> you know, all these things add up. And whatever 
is happening right now with these leaks, these thruster problems, anything that's going on that they're going to figure out is not ideal, not nominal, off nominal, then they are going to, again, delay. They're going to delay their next mission. And so they're losing significant amount of money. Like a billion and a half dollars was what was said last year or estimated last year that Boeing is losing on this program. Is it even worth it for Boeing to continue? It's, you know, NASA wants this. NASA wants there to be two systems, two capsules to American capsules in case something happens to one you've got the other one dissimilar redundancy we don't want NASA United States does not want to rely on the Russians like we had to do from the space shuttle retirement in 2011 to the first crew demo mission of the SpaceX crew dragon that was a nine-year gap where we had to rely on the Russians to carry Americans to the International Space Station and back. And we still have that crew exchange going on. That's a whole separate topic, but it was an embarrassment and even more of an embarrassment now because of the geopolitical tension between the United States and Russia. And so what we don't want is to be in a situation where we only have one American capsule. And that's the situation currently. You know, SpaceX is a phenomenal workhorse. They have definitely proven themselves to be absolutely capable of taking astronauts, you know, both NASA astronauts and private astronauts to the International Space Station and getting them back to Earth safely. But if something happens, if, oh, God forbid, there was some kind of fatality, something went wrong, and you have to ground Dragon for a, per a period of time, you don't want to be in that position where you're, again, relying solely on the Russians. You want a second American system. At least that was NASA's thinking back in 2014 when they awarded two contracts and not just one. So going back to a year ago, and it was actually on an interview with something called the Check Six podcast, the CEO of Boeing, Dave Calhoun, said that Boeing was not shutting the door on Starliner. And the reason he made that statement was because of all the speculation because of statements that were made by the vice president and program manager for Starliner, Mark Nappy, who said that the company had been talking internally about the future of Starliner and how we're going to move forward. And he later clarified to say that th that he didn't mean that they were considering shutting down the program. He just meant that they were you know, doing internal planning. But the speculation at the time was that maybe Boeing is going to walk away from this. Maybe Boeing had had enough. They were just going to give up. They'd lost enough money. And you know, that is not unheard of, as we just saw with Collins Aerospace and the spacesuit situation. But Boeing did decide to go forward. Boeing is, is currently doing its demo mission. What comes after this demo mission? And I think the answer to that depends on how badly this demo mission goes once they're on the ground. If they find that these are minor tweaks, minor adjustments, and they can generally fix them fairly quickly and easily, then I don't think anything's going to change. I think we're going to see the first operational Starliner 1 mission going forward. When it's going to go forward, I don't know. So there's probably going to be quite a bit of a gap between this demo mission and the first operational mission. If there is some major, major problem, if this ends up being a complete disaster for Boeing, which at this point I don't see it happening, but let's just say, you know, God forbid something awful goes on during re-entry and it is a nightmare for everybody involved, I can definitely see Boeing stepping away from it. But it would have to take that level of drama. It would have to take that level, level of catastrophe for Boeing to walk away because Boeing is a major partner of NASA and Boeing doesn't want to lose that partnership. If you say to NASA, we are backing out of this major program, this made, you know, spacesuits are one thing. Spacesuits are important and critical, but it's not something that is generally in the, you know, in the news. The launch of astronauts to the International Space Station is something that is front and center. It is something that people pay attention to simply because human lives are on the line um, and it, it, it's a multi-step process. You know, you've got the launch, you've got the capsule, you've got the docking, you've got the, you know, the opening ceremony. I mean, like people really do pay attention to that kind of thing. Maybe not most people, but I think that's more in the limelight. It's, it's certainly more expensive. This is a major program. And according to the original contract, Boeing is supposed, is supposed to fulfill one, one demo mission and two operational missions, at least two operational missions, all the way up to six additional missions. And if they back out of that, if they say, we're doing this demo and we're done, like how is that gonna reflect not only on NASA and, and Boeing's reputation within NASA, but also Boeing's reputation with any other government agency? You know, Boeing's track record right now in general is not great. I'm no aviation expert, but I can tell you that people are definitely 
definitely evaluating whether or not they want to continue working with Boeing and how, how the company operates and, and their quality control and their reliability. And so if you have just yet another example of a high profile contract being broken or not being fulfilled, then I don't think that is something Boeing wants in the news. So I do not believe that Boeing is going to back out of Starliner. I do believe that it's going to continue to do at least two more Starliner missions. One question I have is Boeing going to be forced to do on its own dime, perhaps a second demo mission. Like, is this demo mission that's happening right now enough to satisfy NASA? Because according to the wording of the NASA press release back in 2014, quote, once each company's test program has been complete, has been completed successfully and its system achieves NASA certification, each contractor will conduct at least two and as many as six crewed missions on the space station. So that again, that's once each company's test program has been completed successfully and its system achieves NASA certification. So it's not enough to just to bring these astronauts back and call that mission done. NASA has to certify Starliner. NASA has to say, we trust Starliner with our astronauts. And if NASA doesn't say that, it, you know, this press release doesn't say what happens, but I'll bet some contract somewhere says what happens. And I do wonder if things are go uh, poorly enough, whether or not there might need to be a second crew demo, just like there was a second uncrewed demo. Now, I did speak in length about the fact that Boeing is not competitive when it comes to commercial missions. I will link that video at the end so you can watch it after this one. But I'm curious to know whether or not Starliner has a future with government. Let's talk about maybe Gateway. After the International Space Station is retired in 2030, I don't know how many missions Boeing can possibly do between now and when ISS is retired, simply because they are taking so long and this guaranteed to be a delay between this mission and the next one. How many missions can Boeing possibly fit in? I don't know. I doubt they can fit in all six, um, but hopefully they can fit in the two additional promised ones. But after ISS is retired, does that mean Starliner ends? Is there room for Starliner with any other um, program? I don't foresee it being commercially viable in, in comparison to other vehicles when it comes to the commercial LEO destinations, commercial space stations, but government space station, like the gateway around the moon, that could be a potential use for Starliner. And so if Starliner, if Boeing wants to recoup its costs and continue to use Starliner in the future beyond ISS, it needs to prove itself to be a reliable partner right now on ISS. And if it has any hope at all of getting any kind of commercial contracts to any commercial LEO destination, well then it really does need to prove itself even more and bring the costs down so it can be cost competitive against all the other competitors, especially SpaceX. Go ahead and watch this video next where I talk about that.